I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. The axe has fallen at both Orange Regional and Catskill Regional Medical Centers, where a total of 140 full-time employees received layoff notices today. Officials with the Greater Hudson Valley Health System announced today that the cutbacks, 80 positions at Orange Regional and 60 at Catskill Regional, became necessary because of substantial cutbacks in federal and state government reimbursements, along with other revenue declines connected to reforms made in the health care system. Health System CEO Scott Petula said efforts were made to minimize the layoff impacts on those departments that provide direct patient care. The layoffs are part of an overall restructuring aimed at reducing expenses by $12 million at Orange and $5 million at Catskill. Reporter Steve Israel will have more, including reaction, here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. An Ulster County Court judge has issued a warrant for the arrest of Lance Muckenhaupt, the man responsible for starting the massive fire that burned down the Tamarack Lodge in the town of Warsing last year. The Long, Long Island businessman was supposed to appear in court this morning to face sentencing after pleading guilty last month to a misdemeanor charge for starting a fire to burn brush that raged out of control back in April of 2012. Uh, the fire would uh, spread over 50 acres, destroying 50 structures, including the old Tamarack Lodge, leaving 44 people homeless. Muckenhaupt was originally indicted on an arson charge, but charges were reduced when it was determined he didn't intend to burn down the buildings. He was expected to get a maximum of 60 days in jail and three years probation at sentencing this morning, but because he was a no-show, Muckenhaupt may uh, now face further jail time. Reporter Mike Randall will have the full story here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. They vow to keep the pressure on. Gun rights advocates rallied Sunday at Bullville Park as part of the ongoing effort to repeal the New York SAFE Act, which opponents say amounts to an attack on their Second Amendment right to bear arms. The so-called Freedom Rally also featured the establishment of an Orange County chapter of Oath Keepers, a national gun rights organiza organization that includes police personnel who don't want to see the SAFE Act enforced. We are asking our police, firefighters, military to simply say no to any unconstitutional or illegal, unlawful order. Simply stand down. And thoughts around this uh, New York state right now is very, people are very, very upset with Governor Cuomo and his illegal, tyrannical laws. The rally also included members of the group W2A, Women for the Second Amendment. Cheryl Thomas is the local spokesperson. Uh, what got me started the, really into this is when the Syracuse mom and her daughter uh, were abducted from the mall in Syracuse and uh, the mother was killed after vo both of them being violently brutalized or raped. And uh, I just said, that's it. I'm going to walk in my Second Amendment right. I'm going to own it. I'm going to do what I have to do to become uh, a skilled and, uh, and trained uh, law-abiding gun owner and that's what I've done to protect myself. So it's a constitutional issue for me but it's also a very personal issue for me as well. Those attending the rally were urged to fill out cards petitioning for the repeal of the SAFE Act. They'll be uh, presented during a rally to be held tomorrow in Albany. Bail has been set at $75,000 for John Ortiz, the town of Thompson man who reportedly pointed a gun at a Sullivan County Sheriff's deputy during a brief standoff inside his residence early Sunday morning. Deputies were called to his home to answer a call of a disturbance. Ortiz initially told officers he was employed by the FBI and CIA. When he offered to show his badge, he pulled out the revolver, which turned out to be unloaded. Deputy Kyle Muthig uh, drew his weapon and convinced Ortiz to drop his. He was taken into custody after a brief struggle. Deputies found several rifles and swords inside the residence. Ortiz faces charges of felony menacing and weapons violations. And in the city of Newburgh, police are looking for the public's help in their uh, search for the person who fatally stabbed another man Friday afternoon on the 200 block of 3rd Street near Downing Park. The victim, 21-year-old Daquan Nugent, died after being rushed to St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital with multiple stab wounds. Police continue to search for any eyewitnesses to the killing, and they're asking anyone with information to call them at 561-3131. It is the economic pulse of the town of Wallkill. The Route 211 retail quarter 
is home to many of Wallkill's small and not so small stores. And today, about 30 store owners and managers accepted the invitation of town officials by attending a forum set up to improve communications between local government and businesses and to proactively address merchant problems and concerns. Wallkill Supervisor Dan DePew called the meeting a good first step since he said town government can't fix it if they don't know it's broken. Our goal is to bring the retail corridor in the town of Wallkill, uh, all the retailers into the fold to bring them together and to uh, create the safest, cleanest, most convenient retail location in the Hudson Valley. We'll probably never be the biggest. That goes to Woodbury Commons. Uh, they're number one in New York State for a local community. But we really want to be able to be competitive in a way that is different, uh, competitive in a way that people can appreciate and that people would feel comfortable and happy to come to shop in the town of Wallkill and build upon our image. Part of the attempt to improve the town's image and identity will include better signage, reminding motorists and shoppers that they're in Wallkill, not Middletown. DePew says another forum will be held in the fall to help usher in the busy, busiest shopping time of the year. Elsewhere, hundreds of area residents have begun new chapters in their lives following graduation ceremonies at some of the region's colleges held over the weekend. Friends and relatives of the more than 425 SUNY Orange graduates packed the Phys Ed building on the Middletown campus to witness the college's 63rd commencement. Many of the grads will continue their education, while others now hope to begin successful careers. The SUNY Orange graduations normally held on Alumni Green, but there was moved to uh, the Physical Education building because of the construction of the college's new Center for Science and Engineering. Hours later, some of the close to 260 graduates at SUNY Sullivan shared their stories of triumph over adversity, as well as the beginning of a celebration of new beginnings during the college's 49th commencement. Ceremony at the college's Lock Sheldray campus marked the beginning of what uh, will be a year-long celebration of SUNY Sullivan's 50th anniversary. Among the speakers, Center for Discovery Chief Executive Officer Patrick Dollar told the graduates to be resilient and to be ready to fight the fight and come back for more. And Saturday was also an extra special day at Mount St. Mary College in Newburgh, where more than 600 uh, master's and bachelor's degree candidates were officially recognized during the Mount's 50th commencement ceremony held at the college's Dominican Center Field. Graduation speakers there included uh, best-selling author James Patterson, who received an honorary doctorate degree. The threat of rain will hang over us during the next uh, couple of days. It'll be mostly cloudy Tuesday with a chance of, late, of a late day thunderstorm. The highs will be up around 80 degrees. Forecast pretty much the same for Wednesday, mostly cloudy with showers and thunderstorms. Again, a possibility later in the day. Temperatures Wednesday should uh, again hit the 80 degree mark. Well, Make Record Online your source for news whenever and wherever it breaks. And get the news and information to help start your day in tomorrow's Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.